who's ready for example four? I know I am. So example four is all on graphing inverse relations. So we are basically going to be combining everything that we've talked about so far. Holy hot dog, I'm super excited. So on this first one, we'll be focusing on the function f of x equals x plus 7. So we'll be making a table of values so we can plot f of x. We'll be finding the domain and range. And then we're going to do the same thing with the inverse. We're going to make a table and find the domain and range. And also find our inverse equation, which is just like what we did in example 2 and 3. So this is very similar to example 1, where we're graphing points and finding domain and range. But it's slightly different because we have more than just a set of three points now. We have an entire function, so this will be all the values on the graph. So it will be slightly different, but kind of the same idea. So, whenever we start these, first of all, we're going to make a table of values of x's and y's. Remember, f of x is the same thing as y. Okay, so, whenever we make a table, okay, it's really good when you pick values that are, you're going to pick some negatives, some positive numbers, and zero. That way, on your graph, you have a nice selection of values. So, I personally always pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And I choose those because they're small values because we have to solve for our y value. So if the numbers are smaller, it makes it a little bit easier to solve. But you can really pick any numbers you want. Um, but again, it's going to have some negatives, some positives, and 0. So we're first going to find what y is when x is negative 2. So first step, we're going to be replacing our x with the negative 2. So my x is going to turn to negative 2, so it's going to be negative 2 plus 7. And negative 2 plus 7 equals 5. So the first point that you'll be plotting is negative 2, 5. That's my x, negative 2, and my y is the 5. Alright, we're going to do the same thing with the rest of the values, and then we'll be plotting this. will be amazing. So now, I'm going to be replacing my x with the negative 1. So my f of x, so f of, I guess I should say f of negative 1. My f of negative 1, negative 1 plus 7 will give me a 6. Okay, so my next point that I'll be plotting is negative 1, 6. Same thing with the 0. So f of 0 equals, I'm going to replace my x with a 0, so 0 plus 7 will give me a 7. So the next point I'm plotting is 0, 7. Alright, same thing with 1 and finally with the 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and write f of 1 and f 2 so I'm ready to go when I get there. So my first one, I'm going to replace x with a 1. So 1 plus 7 will give me an 8. So my next point I'll be plotting is at 1, 8. And the final point I will be plotting, I'm going to replace my x with a 2. So 2 plus 7 will give me a 9. So this will be 2, 9. Alright guys, so let's get these points on our graph. So our first point's at negative 2, 5. My next point is at negative 1, 6. My next point is at 0, 7. My next point is at 1, 8. And then my final point is at 2, 9. And since this equation is technically to the first power, remember if you don't see an exponent, it's technically 1. Okay, that means it's a linear function. So if I did it correctly, it should form a straight line. But I know my graph isn't perfect, so it probably won't be a perfect straight line, but it's going to be pretty close. So when I connect all these dots, my line will look something like this. And since this is a function, I have to put arrows on the end because this means x could be anything. So it could keep going on for forever. So now, domain and range. So remember, for domain and range, you ask yourself how far left does the graph go and how far right does the graph go. So for the domain, I'm going to show you both interval and inequality notation, so I don't leave out any person that likes to do one or the other. So for domains, we start by asking ourselves, how far left does our graph go? So if you see here, this graph will keep extending on in this direction for forever. So keep heading left to infinity in the negative direction where the demon cats are, so you better watch yourself. So from negative infinity, and then we ask ourselves, 
How far right does the graph go? Okay, well the graph is going to keep heading in this direction for forever. So it's going to head to the positive infinity direction. So to infinity and beyond with Buzz Lightyear. So our domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, and since we go from all the way negative to all the way positive, we're going to including all the numbers on the x-axis. So for interval notation, that's when we say x is all real. That's when you use that funky notation. All right, now the range, same idea, except now we're focusing on the y values. So you ask yourself, how low does the graph go? Okay, well that arrow pointing down means it goes down for forever. So it heads down for forever, which heads to negative infinity. And then you ask yourself, how high does the graph go? Well, that arrow pointing upward means it keeps going up for forever. So it heads to positive infinity. All right, and just like before, since we went all the way from all the negative y's to all the positive y's, this time we say y is all real. Yay! So that's the original function graph, but now we're going to be focusing on the inverse. Okay, so before we get this graphed, the first thing we're going to do is find the inverse equation, which we're jumping back to kind of what you did in example 2 and 3. So I'm going to start by writing my original equation, and we're going to find what the inverse would be. So my original equation was f of x equals x plus 7. Okay, which remember when we're finding the inverse equation, it's good to go ahead and change your f of x to a y because those x and y values will interchange. Okay, so now to get started on the inverse. So I'll do that work over here. The first thing to do is to interchange our x and our y values. So my x is going to hop to where the y is, and the y is going to hop to where the x is. So my y is going to transform into an x. So I have x equals, and then my x is going to turn into a y. So it'll be y plus 7. Okay, and then all you got to do is solve for y, and you'll have your inverse equation. Holy hot dog. Okay, and remember, I personally like to write the y first, so I'm just going to kind of rotate this equation around. So y plus 7 equals x. All right, guys, let's get y by itself. So the first thing you're going to do is to, the 7 is getting in the way, and the opposite of positive 7 is negative 7, which 7 minus 7 is 0. And I'm going to also subtract it to the other side, which x and 7 are not like terms, so you cannot combine them. So your inverse equation is going to be y equals x minus 7. And remember, we like to write things in our fancy inverse notation it makes it fancier so I'm gonna rewrite the y with the little negative one that means the inverse of f of x equals x minus 7 so that is my inverse equation pretty awesome isn't it alright so now next up we're gonna need to graph our inverse equation so we're gonna graph this now I have a shortcut from you you do not have to sit here and make a table of values and then substitute them into your inverse. Okay, you can do that if you want, but there is a faster way. If you see up here, we have a set of points. And if you remember from example one, when you have a set of points, all you have to do to find the inverse points is to interchange your x and y values. So we're going to take our existing points and just going to flip-flop all of them. The x will hop where the y is and the y will hop where the x is. Okay, so my first point, since the first one up here is at negative 2, 5, my very first point will be at 5, negative 2. Okay, my next point, it was negative 1, 6, but now it's going to be 6, negative 1. Holy hot dog, right? All right, and then my next point's at 0, 7. So this one, when I interchange those values, will be 7, 0. My next one, it was 1, 8, but now it is 8, 1. And my final point, it was 2, 9, but now it's going to be 9, 2. Okay, so these are the points we're going to be plotting for our inverse graph. So I'm going to plot them real quickly. Okay, so my first point is at 5, negative 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 2. 
My next point is at 6, negative 1. My next point is at 7, 0. My next point is at 8, 1. And my last point is at 9, 2. And it should be a straight line, but just do your best. Especially if you do one by hand, it's going to be hard to make it perfect. So something along this, these lines right here. Alright, so that's my lovely inverse graph. Now, instead of sitting here like we did here and thinking about how far left and how far right does the equation go for our domain range. Okay, remember back to example one. Remember the domain and range also interchange when you have an inverse function. So the domain becomes the range and the range becomes the domain. So this one, it's not going to really look like the domain and range are inter sorry, domain and range are interchanging because the domain and range are pretty much the same thing. Okay, but I'm just going to show you what it would look like. So your domain, Okay, would be the range of the original. So my range is negative infinity to positive infinity. So that would be the domain of my inverse function. Okay, and then instead of it being y is all real, okay, since we're talking about dona domain, we just change the y to an x. So my range has become my domain, and now my range here will, will be the original domain. So the original domain was from negative infinity to positive infinity, so my new range is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then since my original domain was x is all real, now that we're talking about the range, it'll be y is all real. So you're probably looking at this video and you're like, Miss Long, I don't know what you're talking about because they're the same thing. Well, if it looks like I didn't do anything in example 5, you'll see how this actually changes. But even though it doesn't look like it, the domain range did in fact interchange. So, we have graphed the inverse, found the inverse equation, and found the domain range of the inverse. That was so much fun, you guys. So now we're going to start example 5, which is pretty much the same thing as this. We're just going to have a quadratic. So instead of something to the first power, we're going to be dealing with something to the second power. So if you want to try it on your own, go ahead and try the next problem on your own. You can pause the video and uh, fast forward to the end. Um, otherwise, you can watch as I do the problem. Get, get excited, you guys.